the way we tried to pick the pieces was by actually finding something that everybody could play, and we had to sort of go for the lowest common denominator because the worst player in this whole thing, of course, is myself. Um, as I found out since we've started rehearsing in the last couple of days, and you know, I was up until 3.30 in the morning, still writing out little charts for myself because I can't remember most of it. You know, I'm sort of amazed that at one point or the other I, I could actually play this. How do I choose my work? I actually pick my work usually by trying to work with friends. I mean, I love working with Ridley Scott. I love working with Jim Brooks. I mean, I'm not excluding anybody here, but you, really the people I work with, you know, they, are, they, are, they become my family for that period of time. Um, and it's very, it's very much by trying to work with directors with, with a vision as well, you know, because it's more exciting and it's more interesting. The first thing I said to Ridley, it's such a boy's movie, so I have one ambition and one ambition only, that I want to write music that will keep the ladies in the seats as opposed to, you know, because I know that from my own wife when I say to her, hey, do you want to go and see Gladiator? She'll go, oh no, not an action movie, can't we see something romantic? So my whole conceit and ambition was that the music should be, should at one point become very romantic, and in a way the music emotionally should uh, legitimize the action or the violence. The thing that stood out for me working with Hans um, was the fact that he never frightened me. And when I arrived in Los Angeles to work with him, we improvised for one week and we wrote ten pieces of music, some of which were ten minutes long. And they varied all types of different musics. And it was such an extraordinary creative period. In, uh, in Los Angeles, right before he started doing Power of One. Uh, he called me in, I visited him, shared ideas about Power of One, and I ended up working with Power of One. When we finished Power of One, I, I went to Africa, did more movies. He called me again to do Lion King. I knew what an orchestra sounded. I got a good memory for sound. Um, I mean, it's, it's really interesting in this concert, for instance, there's myself, there's Lisa, oops, there's Lisa Gerard, there's Pete Haycock. None of us read music, you know, and then there, there, there's the orchestra and everybody reads music, but somehow, you know, hopefully, if everything works out, we'll all start at the same point and end up at the same point and, and it'll be a sort of a cohesive mess. Um, but, you know, we, we, we just have a different sense about music. You know, it's, a, it's more about memory or just feeling it, you know. Um, look, I'm smart enough to learn how to read notes. I just never found it necessary. <sighs> In the last month or so, <laughs> I did an Irish film for Barry Levinson with, um, with my friend Hector and um, 
we just did it like a band thing. And it was in the summer, so we just just everybody came out to my house, and we just set up on the lawn. You know, we put we took one of my wife's chopping boards from the kitchen, put it on the lawn, so the cellist could put his cello down. And we just sat around in the circle and wrote music together for this Irish movie, uh, which is coming out before Christmas, called Everlasting Peace. Um, then we've just finished a film for Sean Penn um, called The Pledge with Jack Nicholson, which is it's it's very experimental, so very an existential movie, very very dark and um, a completely different sound from that happy <laughs> Irish sound. And now you, you catch me just at the right moment, just as I'm diving into Hannibal. But I promise you, you don't want to talk to me in two weeks because I sort of take on the character a little much. Mm -hmm.